What good YouTube and welcome to the house. I want to talk about a bit of a controversial conversation going around the community today and that's does Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel make you a worse physical paper TCG player? And I think this comes from Yu-Gi-Oh! Dueling Book being down a couple of days but I'm seeing more in-depth conversations on this back and forths. I saw it briefly mentioned in DB Grinders video where he was like oh, I played a couple hours of Master Duel I just feel off today and I think with this multi-layered cake a lot of people only look at the layer that they are on in the conversation so I want to go around to different scenarios with this where it might affect a different viewer in the audience who is barely keeping up with Yu-Gi-Oh but trying to actually look at the newer decks or the player who is top tier competitive YCS level and then Let's start with myself. It's actually affected my content somewhat recently, and I've also been keeping up with Master Duel more so while I was doing my move, because it's easier to just log in, do my dailies, get my gems, and grind the festivals a little. I've been doing the pack openings on Twitter, but when the ban list rolled around for the physical TCG, Labyrinth was a will it or want it deck. A lot of people were saying it would be taking over, and I was like, I think it will be a contender, but I think once it is in contender, people are going to start citing cards for it like Red Reboot. I'd recently had a Red Reboot played on me, but I forgot where from. It was from Master Duel. It's banned in the TCG. Now, that's on me for not really keeping up and remembering our ban list and scenarios, but in that moment while I'm in a conversation that's free-flowing and talking through the ban list and my thoughts, well... I had it played on me recently, so I thought it was there. And that's going to lead me to something that's also maybe controversial to hear, Yu-Gi-Oh players are human. 90 plus percent of Twitch chat spamming, oh, they're stalling for time, he's a cheater, they're a cheater. Well, a lot of the time it's either not intentional cheating, it's actual fatigue, activating an effect again. Whoa, those top level players, they should always know. Do you know what it's like to play 15 to 16 rounds of super stressful Yu-Gi-Oh and start playing for some of the highest stakes? Mistakes are going to get made even by the best. I won my championship because Adam Korn, one of the most accredited players of all time, misplayed against me in my finals game three. It is definitely going to happen so people try to take their time and think through scenarios. But when you start thinking through scenarios and you've been playing maybe a bunch of Yu-Gi-Oh Master Duel and you're on the top level of the TCG, you might end up actually going through a couple scenarios that aren't there if you're careful. Not to call myself top, right now I am pretty casual yet I try to keep up with the incatracies of the physical TCG because it does affect my content in Market Watch. And I this week have been playing catch up a bunch, which Dueling Book being down definitely sucked for me, but it's been awesome that it's been back up. I've been able to watch and top rated DB is more like late rounds of a regional, Cash Tira and labyrinth trap tricks but i've also got to caught some top level heroes as well as math mech so when that's in top rated db you can see it's not necessarily an accurate representation of what's going on in paper Yu-Gi-Oh, right but at the same time I, if there is a math mech that is above four and oh at the houston regionals and there's not like a superstar studded matchup i'm gonna try to feature math mechs in the later rounds there's also dragon link so with all of these releases you're getting like sprite in Master Duel, right? And you might be learning Sprite that way. First off, you don't have access to all of the cards there. Same with Labyrinth. They've updated here in the TCG on top of that. And then you're not even going to have the matchup knowledge for the current card. So if you're trying to be top level competitive, yeah, Master Duel is not it. But if you are just entering the game, this is one of the hardest learning curves ever Training wheels are necessary, and that's what automated simulators are often compared to. You got the flashing graveyard in your face telling you you have an activation. That's a good thing that's going to teach people how to do this for the first couple times, right? But as you're getting into physical TCG, these are things you need to learn to remind yourself of. These are things that you're going to have to keep track of. Did I activate that this turn or not? Should I save this for later? What other routes can I go through? Looking through your own extra deck instead of scrolling through it just quickly. Those kinds of things, these are what you have to learn to do in real time and there's an actual learning curve to it. Now, I think my audience as a whole is a bit more competitive minded. You have trade binders probably if you're watching market 
market watch and you're keeping up with card prices, that sort of thing. But when I'm looking at even other top players, uh, DB Grinder is definitely a top level player. And he's talking about while doing his content that Master Duel has actually affected his outlook on commentating a match you've got to imagine other top level players who are keeping up with the tcg might have a problem in connection if they don't just put immense hours in differentiation when you have the same kind of cards flying around to a degree that you might begin to play against scenarios that aren't there just like i put a card that wasn't there for the ban list i do think there's something to be said though with master duel where it, it can definitely help you maybe see a play you didn't see before or a line in play. But the number one resource in both getting better at Master Duel and the physical TCG is going to be players that you can consistently bounce your ideas off and talk to. I would never have won my championship without Team Outphase. Ryan Spicer, Billy Brake, Philly Luna being able to bounce ideas off them, play test with them, Chris Bowling. Those amazing accolade players that are far above anything I've ever done. I'm so glad I had access to them. In modern day, if you can get access to somebody like Pac or Jesse Cotton or Joshua Schmidt, and, uh, you know, some of them are streaming and doing content there, aren't they? you have access to their minds and the ability to talk to them and the ability to actually get their thoughts on certain things i think that is a great resource when it comes down to it and you want to have access to things like that to get better at a game be it master duel or be it Yu-Gi-Oh! Physical TCG. So when it comes down to those kind of things, they're the people who can like, oh, why, why'd you play this way? Question you and kind of smack it out of your head. Hey, that only exists in Master Duel before you put it up on a video. I do think that it is also understated the good that Master Duel has done for the game because so many people were disappointed that it wasn't the current format and people are kind of tired of Dueling Book in the sense of same old look, this kind of thing. I think Dueling Book's a great community resource and while it is a bit dated in terms of looks and how it performs at times, the judges aren't always online and you wish they were there more often, right? It can be definitely just multiple different things that stop you from wanting to play it. I think Dueling Book's the closest thing you have to the physical TCG online in the realm and that's why this conversation really diverged so much from it. Top rated DB is actually a really good resource for watching the game. Thanks for watching today's video. I know I'm, I'm twitching a little. My allergies are acting up, so give me just a bit. I promise it's not just I gotta get this watch time. But when it comes down to it, for me, I think commentating the Houston Regionals, catching up on Yu-Gi-Oh! and Physical and seeing where it's at versus Master Duel and the recent power creep in the game, I definitely do think there's something there to you've got to keep more hours by far, probably at least a 4 to 1 ratio versus your Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel gameplay for Master Duel not to affect your physical TCG gameplay. I think about that ratio. Again, it's going to vary person to person. Some people might even be able to see it as a completely different game and block it out of their head like they might see a past format and block that gameplay out of their head where it only teaches them lessons but doesn't affect their gameplay. Different people, different strokes, different folks, right? So I do think that Again, you the viewer, it's going to affect you differently depending where you're at with the game or where you're at trying to catch up or where you're at trying to win an event and sometimes you're going to have to push Master Duel a little bit to the side, pick up those physical cards or dueling book or whatever system helps you the most along with the playtesting group that you have in order to get that experience in in order to not have master duel affect your main game in a negative way because i definitely think that is there and i do think that's something you have to wean yourself off on if you're trying to get to that top next level but again maybe it doesn't affect you the same depending on how your mind's crafted i want to actually go back to another community that i often reference justin wong with fighting games just kind of goes to different fighting games with this kind of mind towards them that's able to clear the way that he's not stuck 
like other players can get with fighting games. And I think Billy Break was actually very much that for Yu-Gi-Oh! Where he picks up a deck without any reference at first and talks to people after he picks up the deck and then refines himself. But like with Metal Foes, he was playing Metal Foes completely different from anybody in the physical TCG. And you're going to have those different brains where they click with things and mechanics differently than anybody else. And it's just not going to affect them. But if you're not a Billy Breaker, Justin Wong, sometimes you got to put in that hard work and practice over and over and over and over again and get everything down. And that's where I think Master Duel with that kind of mindset well, in fact, if you're a Rock Lee, not a Gara, you know what I'm talking about. Thanks for watching today's video. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy the conversation. And again, it's a controversial one. I'm sure there's going to be different kinds of takes on it. But try to keep it civil, right? Like, we're just talking about Yu-Gi-Oh! and how it can affect you in different ways. But I definitely know that also the Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro base, which I'm saving for the end here, they've already been hearing these arguments for ages in terms of the simulator, the flashing, that kind of stuff training wheels is the term so i know there's going to be some resentment maybe feelings there in terms of what you've heard from the takes but the takes are there for a reason depending who you are and how it might affect your future gameplay